Hey everyone, I'm Double D, and today I will make Wordle in plain JavaScript. I should make a few disclaimers before I start. This will be sort of a speed run, so hopefully I can get it done in less than 10 minutes. Also, I won't care about the structure of my code, the performance, or anything like that. And I also won't implement all the features of Wordle. All I want to do is make the core functionality of the game and also the CSS animations that make the letters flip whenever your word is revealed. Anyway, let's get started. I'll be using VS Code and I'll create the script file where I will just alert hello. Let's also create a CSS file. Here I'm just going to place the contents of the game container in the center. Finally, let's create the index.html file and just use a template HTML setup and just change the title to Wordle. I will link the CSS file in the head. The body is going to have a div with an ID game and a script pointing to index.js with a type module. Let's open this in the browser and see if the script works. It does. And now I'm just going to play around with the CSS and create some styles for my game. Let's open the CSS file and set up some classes. First of all, let's set the width of the game container and the height. Set the background color of the page to a darker color. And I'm actually going to use the exact same colors used on the real Wordle website. To do this, I used a tool called ColorCop, which gives you the RGB and the hex values of any color on your screen. So now I have these four colors, which I'm going to be using throughout the whole game. And for the background, I'm going to use the default one. Next, the grid class is going to have display grid. And we're going to have six rows and six columns. Finally, the box class is going to have a width and height of 60 pixels, a border, a margin of four pixels, text color is going to be white, and text transform is going to be uppercase. We also need to center the text, so let's just put display grid and place items center. Last thing I'll add is the font family. Arial, and also the font size. Now we're going to need separate CSS classes for each state of the box. So the box can be either empty, which means the letter is not in the word. It can be wrong, which means the word contains it, but it's in the wrong place. And right, which means it's in the correct place. So let's add these classes. And for each one, we're just going to change the background color of the box. The empty one is gray, the wrong one is yellow, and the right one is green. Now, if we look at the browser, we can't see anything yet, but just to test if our CSS is working, let's add some HTML. I'll add a grid class, and inside it, I'll add five boxes. There's our boxes, and now I can add different classes to them. The wrong one makes it yellow, the right one makes it green. I can add a letter to it. That works and it looks pretty nice. All right, we have the styles figured out. Now let's write the actual code and make the game work. Going back to the index.js file and I'll delete the alert line. Let's write a startup function and I will call this function at the top level. So whenever I want to do something in the beginning, I'll do it in this function. The first thing I want to do is draw a box with a letter inside it. Let's create a function called draw a box. It will take four arguments, the container where it will be added, the row and the column, which is the position of the box on the grid and the letter, which is the letter that will be displayed inside of it. First, I'll create a new div element. The class name will be box. The ID will be something like box and then row and column numbers. 
the text content will be the letter. And finally, let's append it to the container, which will be the grid. Speaking of the grid, let's make a function for drawing a grid. I think the only argument is going to be the container. First, I'll create a grid, which will be a div element. The class name will be grid. Now let's write a loop that goes from zero to six for rows and another loop inside that goes from zero to five for columns. And for each iteration, I want to draw a box. The box's container will be the grid itself. The row will be I and the column will be J. At the end, I want to append the grid to the container. All right, let's test if this works. Going back to the startup function, let's get the game div from the document that we created in the HTML code earlier. And then I'll say draw grid and pass the game container as the argument. As you can see, as soon as I saved the file, the grid was drawn in the browser. Looks pretty nice. The next thing I want to do is create some sort of game state. So the game will have a grid of letters and I want to store that data in a matrix. Essentially, I want to separate the game data from the UI in the actual DOM elements. So let's create a global variable called state. It's going to have a grid with six rows and five columns. Basically, I'm just going to fill up an array of six elements with another array of five elements, creating a two-dimensional grid. The state is also going to have a current row and a current column, which will be the position in the grid where the next letter is going to be typed. And these are both zeros at the start. That's it for now for the game state. I will also need a function that will display this game state in the actual grid, a function that will sort of synchronize the game state and the UI. Let's call it update grid. Here, I will just loop over the grid, get the box from the DOM using the ID format we used to create the box. I will set the text content of that box to whatever is in the game state at, at the moment. And that's it. Now, in order to test this, let's set all the letters of the grid to be the letter A. And then let's update the grid to see if it works. And it does. Cool, let's move on. All right, I'm going to delete this test now and let's get some actual letters on the grid. In the startup function, I'm going to call a function called register keyboard events and then I'll create that function. Here, I want to add an event listener for the key down event. I will also need the event object because depending on what key was pressed on my keyboard, I want to do different things. To get the key, I need to use e.key, where e is the event object. And here I want to pay attention to three events, the enter key, the backspace key, and the letter key. I don't have this function yet, but I will definitely need a function that will determine whether something is a letter or not. And for each of these cases, I want to do something different. However, whatever happens, I want to update the grid at the end. Now for the first scenario where the player presses the enter key, I want to check if the whole word is typed out. If it's not, I just want to ignore this event. If it is, however, I want to check if the word is valid. So let's get the current word first. Once again, I don't have this function, but I will write it later. Right now, I just want to focus on the main logic of the game and I will figure out the small parts later. Once we get the word, let's check if it's valid. If it is, I want to reveal the word. This will tell the player which letters are in the correct place and which aren't. I also want to move on to the next row and set the column number to zero. If the word isn't valid, I just want to display a message saying that it's not a real word. That's it for the enter key. Let's move on to backspace. In this case, I just want to remove the last letter that was typed. And finally, if the pressed key was a letter, I want to add it to the grid. 
Now, I wrote a lot of small functions here that I still don't have. So let's start implementing them. The first one is get current word. In order to get the current word, I'll just put together all the letters in the current row. So on the current row, I will use the reduce function and I will add the previous and the current letter together. The next function is valid word. For this one, I will need some kind of list of words that are valid. So up here above my game state, I will declare a dictionary, which will just be a list of five letter words like earth, plane, crane, audio, house, and so on. And since we're already here, let's also add another item to our game state. This will be called a secret, which will be the actual word the player has to guess. And the secret will just be a random word from the dictionary. So now that we have a dictionary, we can get back to the valid word function, which will just return whether the word is included in our dictionary or not. The next function to write is the reveal word function. This will check all the letters in the current word and display if they're in the correct place or not. So let's get the current row first, and then let's loop over all of its letters. For each one, let's get the box associated with that letter and also the letter itself. And then let's check for the first case, which is if the letter is equal to the letter in the secret word. If so, then the box should be painted green and the CSS class name should be right. Else, if the secret word includes the letter, but it's not in the correct position, then the class name should be wrong. Finally, if the word doesn't even contain the letter, the class name should be empty. Once we're done revealing the word, we need to check two things. First, if the revealed word is correct, in which case the player wins. And second, if that was the last guess, in which case the player loses. Here, I will also tell the player what was the correct word. All right, that's it for this function. And now we have another helper function to determine whether a pressed key was a letter or not. For the isLetter function, I'm going to check whether the key has the length of one and also if it matches this regex expression to see if it's actually a letter between A and Z. I also need a function that will add a letter to the grid. First, I'll check if the current row has any space left. So if we're on the last column, I'll just return. Otherwise, I will set the letter at the current position on the grid. And I will also increment the column number by one. Lastly, to remove a letter from the grid, I will once again check to see if there's anything to remove in the first place. If not, I will just return. Otherwise, I will set the current letter to an empty string and also decrement the column number by one. All right, I think that's pretty much all the code I wanted to write. Now let's test the game and see if it works. Before I head to the browser, I'm actually going to cheat at my own game. And in the startup function, I'm going to console log the secret word that I need to guess. This way I can see if the letters are being revealed correctly. As we can see in the console right now, the secret word is plain. And if I try typing, the letters are being displayed correctly, so that's good. Backspace also works. And if I try something like Earth and hit enter, I can see that there's an E and an A, and they're both in the wrong position. Let's try Crane. Okay, we have three correct letters. And lastly, let's type the correct word, plain. And there we go, congratulations. Now let's try some other scenarios. What if I type a non-existing word? There we go, we got a message saying that it's not valid. And what if I run out of guesses? Better luck next time, the word was plain. Nice. The last thing I want to do is the flipping animation that happens whenever a word is revealed. This is something that Wordle is known for, and if you look at the real game, you can see this really nice and smooth animation. 
If we take a closer look, we can see that the card is basically shrinking in height until it's flat, and then it comes back to its normal height. So let's try to make that. Going back to my CSS file, I'm going to create an animation called flip, and at 0% is going to have transform scale Y1, which won't change anything at all. At 50% is going to be transform scale Y0, which will make it completely flat. And then at 100%, it's going to go back to 1. Now I'm going to add this animation to a class called animated. The duration is going to be 0.5 seconds, and the timing function is going to be ease. Now I'm going to go back to my code, and in the reveal word function, Whenever I determine whether a letter is in the correct position, I will add the animated class to that box. Now, since my animation duration is 0.5 seconds, I will put that in a variable, 500 milliseconds. I will also add a animation delay, which will be dependent on the index or the position of the letter. And I'm multiplying it by 250 because that's how long it takes for the animation to get halfway through. And I'm doing this because I want the background color to change at the exact moment when the card is flat and the height is equal to zero. Next, in order to correctly line up the animation with the actual CSS class change, I will wrap this code in a set timeout. And the timeout will also be dependent on the index of the current letter. The winner slash loser piece of code is also going to be wrapped in a set timeout because it needs to happen after all the letters have been animated, which will be exactly three times whatever the animation duration is. And that's all. Let's head back to the browser and see how all of this looks. I'm also going to delete the console log that gives me the secret answer so I can actually test the game. Let's try the word house. And there's the very nice flipping animation. Let's try crane now. Okay, looks like the word might be earth. And there it is. As you can see, the animations play correctly, as well as the congratulations message at the end. Now, to make the game more interesting, I should probably expand my dictionary and add thousands of words to it so that I can actually have fun guessing it. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you want to check out the code, feel free to visit my GitHub page, which will be in the description. And while you're there, feel free to follow me and maybe star my repository. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.